In this tutorial, as quickly as I can, I'm going to show you how to rig a character, a human character, with Rigify, which is an add-on that allows you to create a pretty complex and production-ready rig without having to know all of the ins and outs and the, and the complicated processes of rigging um, quite as much. So first of all, I'm going to go to Edit and Preferences, and I'm going to enable the Rigify add-on. So we'll type, we'll search for rig here. You can see that this add-on here, Rigify, we're going to check that box. And within that, you can also kind of look and see, like, okay, view 3D tools, panel, armature, add. Basically, it tells us where we're going to find the controls for this add-on. So with that, we're going to add an armature now. So Shift A. And again, like I said, under Armature, we have more options than we used to. We used to just have the single bone. And now we can add a human meta rig. We also have animals and just a very basic quadruped or a basic human. But we're going to add the human meta rig here. And we can see right away that we have a scaling issue. Uh, this rig is too tall for our character. If I click on the character here, you can see that its um, transforms have been applied. Its location is zero, its rotation is zero, and its scale is all 1.0. Um, in terms of dimensions, it's 1.51 meters tall, which is a pretty normal height for a person. Um, this Rigify rig, meta rig, is about 1.98 meters tall. So I'm going to actually shrink that down to kind of fit our person a little better and since the face is probably the most complicated thing to line up here, I'm just going to kind of try to line up the face. You can see that the eye controls, the eye bones are a little too wide for the eye model on my mesh. Hands are a little too wide, but now we're going to come in and we're going to take care of all that. So with the meta rig selected, I'm going to come in here and click this little box that says in front. And what that does for me is that allows me to see through my mesh into the armature. So then I'm going to, with the armature selected, I'm going to apply my transforms, first of all. That's a very important step because this meta rig is not actually the rig that we are going to use to move the mesh we're going to use this meta rig to kind of inform Rigify as to where our character's features are located and then we're from that meta rig we're going to generate the actual production rig that we're going to use. So I need to have my transforms applied here because otherwise uh, since this meta rig was too big and it's currently scaled at 0.739 it's going to generate a rig that is at 100% of the scale that it's scaled down from. So the generated rig would be too generated rig would be too large, long story short. Okay, so in order to apply the transforms, the shortcut is control A. We apply location, rotation, scale, or just all transforms. Or you can come here under your object menu and go down to apply and here are the same options here. So apply all transforms. And now we're going to tab into edit mode. You have to be really careful when you're dealing with this mesh because, or with this armature, um, because some of these bones look like they're together, but they're really just kind of, let's see if I can find an example here. There we go. So you can see that the tip of this bone, lid BL003, and the base of this bone, lid TL, look like they are in the exact same, or they look like they're joined together, but really they're just in the same location. I have to keep those in the same location. If I were to break that, um, then the rig wouldn't generate properly. It would have problems or else it might just throw an error and refuse to generate at all. So when I move those things, I have to make sure that I have both the tip and the base that are supposed to be together selected and I can move them around from there. 
So that's a very, very important ingredient um, to actually putting this mesh together, this, uh, sorry, I keep calling it a mesh, this armature together in a usable way. It's making sure that things that are together by default end up staying together. Oh, and I can see I've already made another big mistake. So we're going to undo what I just did. We're going to turn on our x-axis mirroring before we go any farther so that I only have to do one side of this. I can see the other side's mirroring now, so I'm going to uh, proceed. Just kind of line up these bones. And I'll time lapse through most of this because you don't need to watch me doing all of it. Um, but just a couple of quick notes as far as what's going on here. With the face especially, I'm going to try to get this, um, this face kind of sitting on the surface of my character here. So I might toggle the in front view on and off a little bit. and constrain my axes and just try to get these bases and tips to rest right on the surface there as much as I can. Okay, I'm going to uh, pause the time lapse for a minute here to talk about dealing with the eyes uh, because there's a pretty important ingredient here. Like the eyes in this character are spherical, perfectly spherical. And so when they turn, they need to turn from the center of that sphere. So I need to align the bone with the exact center of this eye sphere here. And luckily that's pretty easy to do, but you just kind of need to be aware that it has to be done and how to do it. So I'm going to alt-click and select this loop here that is perfectly around the center of the eye. I'm going to move my cursor to the center of that selection. So Shift-S and then Cursor to Selected. And then from there, I go back and I select the eye bone here for the armature, I.L. I'm just going to select the base and hit Shift-S and move the selection to the cursor. And then, just to kind of be thorough, I'm going to go back and select the very tip of this eye here, Shift-S, cursor to selected, and I'm going to select the tip of the eye bone, Shift-S, selection to cursor. And that will align it perfectly so that the eyes pivot from the exact center. Okay, I'll resume the time lapse now and then uh, we'll pick it up again when we talk a little bit about the fingers. All right, with the hands here, it tends to get pretty visually complicated. So I am going to hide a lot of the bones that I'm not actually working with, um, just to kind of make it a little easier on myself. And again, you got to make sure that uh, these palm bones and the first finger bones, they stay together. because they're not actually connected, but they need to be in the same mathematical location. Whoop, I almost messed it up there again. All 
All right, now that we've got the hand bones pretty well lined up where we want them, um, I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna tweak that index a little bit. Spoke too soon. Now that we've got them kind of where we want them, we also need to make sure that the bone rolls are in a good spot. So we've got our roll controller right over here when we're in edit mode and in our object data properties for the armature we're going to check this little box to show the axes and I always like to stick the axes right at the tip for me that's more intuitive um, so let's just start with the thumb and I'm going to make sure that these bones are bending around the X axis Okay, so those bone rolls look good to me, and since we have mirroring on, they should look good on the other side. Let's just kind of go in and double check. And they do. The X axes all look like they could be acting as a hinge. Okay, so now we've got our meta rig here. And I am going to. Uh, upgrade the face rig and that still looks good to me it still looks like it's in place and then the next thing we do is we generate the rig so we click there and you can see now we have in our outliner we have meta rig which we've been working with this whole time we have a rig as well it's important to note and remember that once our meta rig, oh, and I made a mistake. So you might remember that at one point, I'm after I applied all my transformations, I moved my uh, rig backward in Y to match up with the face a little better, and then I didn't apply my transformations again. So that's actually really easy to fix. Um, I can either undo what I did here, undo the generation of the rig, and then apply my transforms and generate the rig again, or I can just go back to the meta rig. And you can see that transformation right here in Y. I can apply my transforms to the meta rig, and then I can just click regenerate rig, and now it moves everything in place a little better. So you can see those facial controls are now better placed where they should be. So it's important to remember with the meta rig that at this point, if we have generated our rig and we're happy with it, we are done with the meta rig. So I like to keep it around in case I do need to regenerate the rig, in case I made a mistake like I just did. But I'm going to turn it off in the viewport and hide it so that I kind of have to go through two steps in order to get it visible again. Um, so that I don't accidentally mess up and use it. I don't want to start weight painting to it or parent the mesh to it or anything like that. So the other thing we're going to do here is we are going to parent our mesh to the new rig. So click the mesh first, shift click the rig, and then control P and we're going to select armature deform with automatic weights and that does a pretty good job of parenting the mesh to the to the rig so now we've kind of got this going on you can see the eyeballs aren't following um, that's because in this mesh at least the eyeballs are a different object so we'll fix that in just a second let's test the fingers those look good. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, um, the eyeballs can be handled in a number of different ways, but what I like to do is I like to just parent the eyeballs straight to a single bone. So um, you can see over here on Rigify, we've got all these layers. 
face layer, face primary, torso, torso tweak, arm LIK, arm RIK, a lot of layers here. These layers are also represented in a less descriptive way over here in the armature data properties panel. Um, and you'll notice some layers aren't on and they're actually not represented over here. Layer 30 here is actually the layer that contains the deformation bones. So if I click on these bones, you can see they all have a DEF def prefix. These are the bones that are actually being used to deform the mesh. So what I'm going to do here is I want this little bone on the inside here, uh, i.l, not the outside one, not the i master, but i.l, I want that to be what controls the eye. So I'm going to parent the eyes straight to those bones. To make them easier to select, I'm going to briefly hide the bones around the smaller inner bones. And then I'm going to click away and select the eyeball. And I can't do that unless I first go to edit and unlock my object modes. So now I should be able to select this eyeball. Now I can shift click back on this bone here and I can hit control P and instead of an armature deform with weights or anything like that I can just select bone. And I'm just going to parent that eyeball mesh straight to that bone. So let's do the same thing over here. We're going to select this bone, click away and select the mesh, shift click into the bone and you can see I didn't quite get it, that's okay. Shift click again, we got the bone. No other bones selected. Control P, bone. Okay, now I can come back in and I can go back to my named layers. Stop looking at layer 30, which is kind of visually confusing. And I can turn these other layers on if I want to. Um, but also if I grab the eye controller and I start moving it around, you can see that the eyes now follow. If I tilt the neck, the eyes stay in the head. So that's kind of a good thing going on. And that is a very basic explanation of how to use Rigify to rig a human. I hope that's helpful. Have a great day.